Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Carpenter. Welcome to Dr. Carp Live. Here, okay. here on my show, I bring in medical patients. Maybe some of you guys out there in the audience, I don't know. But I bring them in, I have a seat here, talk about their life, their medical conditions, just to hopefully change their life for the better. Our first patient here we got, his name is Scott. Scott, can you come on in for me? How are you, Dr. Carpenter? You doing okay? There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people here. Just take a seat, okay? Take a seat. So, Scott, how you been? I'm okay. You doing all right? Yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. Relax, okay? Take okay. a deep breath. That's what I'm not, what I'm not told you. So. so, all right. Our first patient here is Scott. Scott suffers from social anxiety disorder. Social? No, no I, I don't. Scott. Social, let me talk. Social anxiety disorder. I don't suffer from social Formally, anxiety disorder. Calm down. Let me let me tell people what we're going to talk about today, okay? Sorry. Social anxiety disorder, formerly known as a social phobia, is an anxiety disorder characterized by a strong, persistent fear of being judged by others. No one's judging you here. This is for you. And frequently feeling embarrassed. Do you feel embarrassed or anything right now? Yes. So you would say you suffer from social... I don't suffer, suffer from any disorder. Scott, I, 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 about I, I can't do this. Sorry about that. We'll be right back after this short break. Do you worry too much? Do you think of the worst in every situation? Do you easily get fatigued? Do you have trouble concentrating? Do you have muscle tension? Is it hard for you to fall asleep? If you're feeling or experiencing any of these symptoms, call your doctor today. Stop wasting time because you very well could be suffering from generalized anxiety disorder, also known as GAD. You may be feeling all these things for many different reasons. You could be intaking too much caffeine, you could have been abused as a child, or maybe you have family history of this disorder. But there's no need to worry because many people suffer from this disorder. But there's no need to worry because many people suffer from this disorder and it's fairly, fairly easy to cure. So don't worry, if you can. You can visit the GAD house, where here we take care of our pa patients and make sure they get the attention they need. In the house, we do cognitive behavioral therapy sessions. This is our number one treatment for this disorder. This will help you find your true identity and modify your thinking patterns. This is a nice therapy session where you can visit or you can visit the yoga room. It's also very relaxing for your mind. You can meditate, anything that soothes, like relieves stress. We have all that here at the GAD house. A day at the GAD house should help our patients and they should, have, they should leave feeling like a new person. Give us a call at 1-800-GAD-HOUS for any additional information and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Come on, son. Take a seat. Sorry about that, guys. We're back live with Dr. Carp. So, Scott, we talked over this before, and we came to a conclusion that you do have social anxiety disorder. We talked about it backstage when you told me and my colleagues. Why don't you tell the audience what you're suffering? All of them? You want me to tell all of them? Yes. But just act, but just act like you're talking to me. I'm the only one here. Talk to me. What are you feeling right now? Well, I just feel kind of anxious and nervous. I want you to be open with me. Be transparent. That way we can try to solve your problem. You need to be as transparent as possible. You volunteered to be on the show, right? Okay. This is like breaking the walls. This is. This is like a first step, okay? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna fight through this together. And everyone in the audience, you guys are with him, right? Give it up. Give it up for him. <laughs> See? They're on your side, all right? All right, well. I know you're probably feeling uncomfortable right now. Are you a little bit? No. Especially on live TV, but it's breaking the ice, okay? All right. So, guys, a little bit of a background of social anxiety disorder. Some of the symptoms, what Scott's feeling right now, he's feeling probably a little shameful, humiliated, embarrassed, and you're probably, like, you really want to get off this show, don't you? That's probably, that's one of the main 
main symptoms of this is avoidance. You just want to get away from everything. Scott, can you tell me and the viewers your story, please? Like where it all started. I um, grew up in uh, St. Louis. Um, had a stereotypical family, uh, younger brother, two great parents, and it was October, two months after my um, my eighth birthday, and my parents sat me and my brother down and told me that they were getting a divorce. A divorce? A divorce. I, um, I mean, I could have never seen it coming. They were as, I mean, when I was with them, like, it just seemed like everything was going perfectly. Yeah. And it just changed just like that, is that right? It just changed. Was it a long process of them arguing back and what, what, what sparked their, their divorce? Do you know? They, they told me that their feelings for each other weren't the same as they once were. And when they sat me and my brother down, it was like, it was like a dream. Like I never saw it coming. Yeah, they were as, they were as happy as they had ever been, you know, for the past yeah. year. So Do they you sat uh, us down. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Do you feel like it, like, it, I'm not trying to, do you, was it meant to be, do you think? Like, did, you didn't see it coming at all? I mean, I don't know if they were, you know, really trying to hide it from me and my brother and the rest of our family, but I, they sat us down and it could have been a dream and I thought I was going to wake up the next, the next minute. Because you told me, you told me backstage the night before they sat you and your brother down that, mm -hmm. uh. That they told you that every that something wasn't right, did you did you take that into consideration? Well, my little brother had always had you know really bad asthma growing up, so I mean, if there was ever an issue with our family, it, that's just kind of the, you know the first thing that came to my mind. So I just, you know, my brother was spending the night at a friend's house, so he wasn't with us you know for that right. conversation yeah. the night before. But so I just figured you know there was something wrong with my brother, but. How long has it been since your parents were divorced? I'm 18 now, so it'll be 11 years next October. Next October. And have you, you told me you ran away for a couple of days. I did. Why? It's just like, just seeing my mom and my dad not together, it just, made me anxious and nervous and sad and whenever I was with them it just brought back those those, those emotions moments. yeah even you know like even years after that happened you know that's why you know I like told you backstage that I haven't talked to him in yeah. a couple of years it just whenever I talked to him it just like all those emotions just like rushed back to me all right so have you ever visited a psych psychologist a, a therapist or any anything like that no so this is your first time this is my first time and it's on live TV <sighs> yeah you keep reminding me I'm trying to trying to help you here I'm trying to break break the barrier that you have so um have you ever so you haven't been to a doctor or anything because no. okay I've been have you ever tried virtual reality what virtual what Virtual reality? Yeah, you haven't? With like the little the goggles, on? goggles on? You haven't done that? No. Oh man. We gotta get you on there. I have an iPhone, not a Samsung. Have you ever tried yogurt? Eating yogurt? I mean, yeah, I've eaten yogurt, but what does that have to do with my disorder? What about miso miso soup? No. Kefir? What has Kefir? a fire? <laughs> Kefir, it's a, it's a, it's a food. <laughs> no, I have not tried. They're that. all probiotics, so they're they're used to treat this disorder. You mean antibiotics, like what they give me when I have a infection? No, 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 no. These are probiotics. They're they're, they're more advanced. They're supposed to help you. Oh, the opposite of an. Okay, got gotcha. you. Know okay, okay. Okay. Um, are you feeling any any more comfortable or anything at all right now? I feel like I've loosened up a little bit. I mean. Like, yeah, you told me backstage, it's just like, the only way I'm going to, you know, get over something is just going at it head on. 
and that's what I've been doing running away. I haven't been I haven't been facing things. Let me let me tell you. If you're scared of heights and you're trying to trying to get rid of that fear, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go to the top of the very top of the highest diving board. You're gonna dive off that diving board. That's true. And what is that gonna do? That's gonna it's gonna wash your fears away. Because you know the water's at the bottom. Or is you're gonna be okay. Wet water. <laughs> so I don't know if you know this, but but for uh where are we at here? I typed it up earlier. So you do know that the most popular do you know what the most popular treatment today is? No, I don't. It's called selective serotonin reputate inhibitors. Sounds complicated, but it's not. It's something that you take and it's gonna soothe you, it's gonna make you feel good. You don't wanna open up to people. It's like you ever tried it? Yeah. You ever tried it? No, I have not. Okay. Um, the newest breakthrough, like I told you, is virtual reality. You never tried that with the goggles on? I mean, I've seen it on like in the Best Buy store and everything, but like I've never actually like tried it for myself. Actually, I have a have a pair right here for you. Really? Why don't you? Here's the VR system. Why don't you put this on for me? We have, we have. Uh, no, it's okay. It's just, it's just a picture of outer space with stars and moons. I want you to look around. I want you to just tell me, tell me what you're feeling. Look around. Look around. Look like look this way. You'll be able to see different things. Feel okay, right? Yeah. Now what? Take that off. What's the? Where do you feel the most anxiety? Like what? What? What setting? The house I grew up in. The house you grew up in. And describe that house. The room that your parents sat you down at. Stereotypical red brick. You know, two windows on each side and pointed middle. Um, where we sat down, we were in the kitchen. Um, granite tile. High, high chair, high, high chair stools. You know, I'm gonna, you're gonna be scared when I put this in here. Put this on for me. You have to face your fears. Audience members, just look into it, look around. Audience members, what I put in here is a, what he said, a very typical room, two windows on each side. This is where he felt the most fear, where his mom and dad told him and his brother the news. Mike, you feeling all right? It's just, I can feel all the emotions rushing back. Just take it in. real isn't it it's really real Mike I just want to thank you for coming on my show today and we're gonna continue and we're gonna we're gonna fight through this together okay it's not just you it's me I'm in this fight with you okay thank you doctor I really appreciate thanks it thanks for visiting dr. Carp live we'll be right back If you have ever experienced or are experiencing constant flashbacks of a certain event, nightmares of this event, intense distress when a certain event is mentioned, or experience problems falling asleep, sudden and extreme reactions to unexpected noises, memory problems, and or concentration problems, you may be experiencing PTSD. PTSD is a condition that affects and occurs in people who have gone through a major traumatic event. Now don't be alarmed. Me and my team of colleagues at Curry Counseling can help you out. With counseling and medication, we can get you right. Now follow me inside. You can get a tour of the facility.
Our most common treatment is the use of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. But here at Curry Counseling, we also have a great counseling program. Over here, you can see one of the counseling rooms. Wow, what a coincidence. We ran into one of our patients leaving the counseling session. Let's ask him some questions. Mr. Curry, how are you doing, Mr. Davenport? I'm doing well. I'd just like to say that this is really affecting like my everyday life, and you know, without you guys, I don't know what I would do. Thank you. We Anything for the patients, Mr. Davenport. Appreciate that. Have a nice day. Thank you. We appreciate it. Now on to one of our virtual reality rooms. Come inside. One of our new and upcoming treatments huh? is virtual reality. Here we have Gage. 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 Oh, Mr. Curry. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? How do you like it here at uh, Curry Counseling? Uh, it's like my second home. Whenever I come in here, and this is my favorite. The VR makes me feel like I can do anything. Makes. It just makes me feel like a good person. I love it. I love it here. Well, that's good. Thank you. We enjoy your time here. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you. you. Continue. Well, if you want to make an appointment at Curry Counseling, call 513-502-1069. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Dr. Carp Live. Thanks for listening to my friend Scott's story. We'll get back with him later and touch base. Now on the show, we have Davis. Can we get up, Davis? How we doing, Davis? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day so far? Yep, pretty good. Okay. So Davis has a phobia, um, a specific phobia. Davis, will you tell me and uh, the crowd what your phobia is, please? Well, I'm afraid of enclosed spaces and just closed areas. It's giving the shivers. How do you feel right now? Well, considering we're in a large room, I'm all right. Okay, good. Davis has claustrophobia. Claustrophobia is an anxiety disorder in which sufferers, sufferers uh, they have trouble staying in enclosed spaces with no escape, uh, such as a small room without any windows, an airplane, maybe an even elevator. But uh, that's called a specific phobia, and uh, it's having a fear of a specific object, thing, person, activity. So yours is small spaces, right? Can you tell me when you started feeling these feeling these things? Well, when I was about four years old, I was at a, a Bengals game and I was there with my uncle who has a peg leg and a cane. So we had to use the elevator. When we got in the elevator, a bunch of people got in there and then we were crowded and they started arguing. Tell me what you and felt. I was scared when they started arguing and shoving each other. And ever since then, I've been afraid of tight, closed spaces because I feel like something could happen to me. Have you ever been on an elevator since? Yes, I have been on an elevator, only the big ones. The big ones. And you? Sometimes I take the stairs because the elevator. If you see small. stairs, would you rather take the stairs? Uh, it depends on if they're small. All right. Well, we're gonna. What I want, like, when you leave here today, I want you to be able to get on an elevator, and I want you to feel safe and comfortable. That's what we're working for, okay? I'll try that. Alrighty. Can you tell me... Let's see here. Can you tell me what... What, like... Why does... Why does something like that... Why does it scare you? You think something's gonna go wrong, or... You yeah, think, yeah. I like, just, does your head start to spin, well, or... It feels like the room is shrinking on me, and it feels like it's constantly getting smaller. And I feel like I'm in a constantly shrinking space. It says physical signs of claustrophobia include sweating, heart rate, increases, dizziness, dry mouth. Have you ever experienced those things? I've been known to get dizzy and pass out. Have you passed out on an elevator before? Yes, sir. I have. Yes, you have. <coughs> Do you have asthma? A little bit. That's why I'm coughing now. Has anyone in your family have have a specific phobia, not maybe not claustrophobia, but just a specific phobia? Well, my dad is afraid of spiders. Claustrophobia. Do you inherit any of those any of those things? I'm been known not to be particularly fond of bugs or spiders. Okay. So you you would say it's another phobia you have is it's not really an intense phobia. I just I just 
they don't bother me, but if they get on me, I don't like it. Okay. And have you, is this your first time talking to a therapist? Yeah, yeah. My wife made me come. I wasn't really happy about it. Okay. Well, good for her. We're trying to, trying to solve this. Have any has anyone told you any treatments or new breakthroughs you can try? Well, I've been told about exposure treatment. That's which is, yeah, exactly. Have you so like I told you earlier? I want you to leave here being comfortable in an elevator. I mean, there's really not much to it. There's not much else we can do. But like, you gotta face your fears, brother. Yeah, I feel you. All right, and like if if you're feeling uncomfortable in an elevator, like you like you said you have. Tell me what you do, what you do in that moment of time. Well, I try to close my eyes and imagine I'm in a big space, like a warehouse or just on an empty street. Is that where you feel most comfortable? I probably feel most comfortable at a beach, but that's kind of hard to imagine for me. So I tend to go towards the empty street one. Have you ever ridden on a train? Yes, I have. Do you feel symptoms of claustrophobia on a train? Not particularly, because I always get the big sweep, so I don't have problems. Cars? <clears throat> Cars give you anything? Um, not really, because I'm in control of the car, so I feel, I feel good. Okay, I got, got a solution for you. <coughs> when you enter a room, I want you to find the closest exits. I want you to locate those. That way, if you feel any type of you know, discomfort or anything, you know where to go. Have you ever done that? Nope, but I would try it. Okay, so you walk in a room, what are you going to do? Find the exits. Alrighty. And have you ever been to a party with a lot of people? Yes, I've been to a few ragers. Do those, do those hinder you at all? Uh, sometimes. Um, well, a lot of times, you know how alcohol is tend to get a little your fears don't bother you as much well that's not what we're going for we don't want you to become an alcoholic that way your phobia goes away you know you gotta gotta stay true to yourself yeah all right well thanks for talking for a little bit we're gonna get right back after this short break all right thank you sir do you ever find yourself getting extremely nervous and anxious in public do you find yourself avoiding to talk to your doctor about it then you may be experiencing random and sporadic attacks of panic and anxiety. If this is true, you need to call Dr. Dab at 112-234-987. You know what? Let's see if we can find someone on the street that's suffering from these horrible symptoms. There's some right now. Sir! 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 <coughs> can I ask you guys a few questions inside? So guys, as I said, I was um, Dr. Dav. So Trevor, Michael, I um, currently I'm studying panic disorders. So I would just like to ask, have you guys heard of panic disorders before? Um, me too, no. All right, well, um, some uh, symptoms of panic disor disorders are being nervous and specifically anxious in public. So, I mean, how do you guys feel about that? Have you ever had any of these symptoms, Trevor? Uh, sometimes when I'm in the mall, Those are definitely <coughs> symptoms of um, <coughs> panic disorder. So, I'd like to formally, you know, put out an invitation to you guys to um, to join my my study. I'm currently, um, you know, going through and testing a 
new treatment that involves virtual reality. In the treatment, we'll slowly walk you through this essay and, painless, and a painless solution to which we will um, integrate you into, you know, Trevor, your fear of the mall, and Michael, your fear of taking tests. And within months, I personally guarantee you that there will be immediate progress. So you will just um, go out the front door the way that you came. My assistant will give you a number and we'll get this process started as soon as possible. We're gonna we're gonna put you to the test. Is that alright? Yeah, it's alright. Let's do it. Will you follow me, please? Yes, sir. Go ahead. We're gonna put you through a test. Where are we gonna put you in a small room? I'm gonna be in there with you, okay? I'm gonna put you in a small room. But don't freak out. There's a door, right? Trevor, turn around. You see the door? You see the exit? How you feeling? Keep breathing. You see the door? You can leave. It's not It's not an elevator, so I want you to stay in there for a little bit. Look around. It's not an elevator. You feeling? You feeling any better? No? Okay, okay, you can walk out for me. Stand right here. It's okay. How was that? Yeah. It was a tough? Yeah, it was terrifying. What was the first thing I told you to do? Find the exit, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you're in a crowded room, you gotta know that there's always in a way out. Cause if you got in, there's gonna be a way back out. So I want you to continue facing your fears. Cause that's the only way you're gonna get over them. And we'll check back in with you later, okay? All right. Thanks for uh, talking to me. No problem, sir. I just wanna go home. We have this project and we have Apex, like just so much stuff. Oh my gosh, get up and help us out. I'm tired. Well. Maybe you should have a cliff bar with 20 grams of protein. It will definitely energize you. How many grams of protein? 20 grams of protein. Let me see that. Take a bite of it. Let's get this project done, man. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Hello, everybody. On. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Dr. Carp Live. Our next patient here, his name is Mike. Welcome to the show, Mike. Can we give it up for Mike? How's it going? I'm going good. Put your hand sanitizer with you. So, Mike, how you doing this morning? something um do you mind uh one second So, our patient here, Michael Curry, he is experiencing from OCD, is that correct? Yes, I am. Okay, a little, little bit of background. OCD is a common, con chronic, and long-lasting disorder in which a person has uncomfortable, reoccurring thoughts. Do you have those thoughts? Uh, I do, I do. And uh, they have the urge to repeat these, these, uh, these behaviors over and over again. Oh, yeah. And as you saw, Michael, I guess my, uh, my 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 table was very unorganized for you. Is that right? Yes, it was. I had to straighten it up for you. All right. And uh, symptoms, constant checking, counting, repeated cleaning like we just saw, um, washing your hands, arranging items to face a certain way as you saw here. Mike, um, 
Tell me when you first started experiencing OCD. I would say when I was uh, about 10 years old, my parents were, they were hoarders and it just really stressed me out. So I felt the urge and need to just organize everything and put everything in its right place. And uh, do you know why, why your parents were like that? Honestly, I, I really don't know, but... They Did just, they know that you were suffering from OCD? I don't think so. I think the fact that I would clean up everything and make everything nice and neat caused them to continue to bring in more things. And did you ever tell them that you have these reoccurring thoughts, that, that everything needs to be this way or that way? You know, I didn't. I just continue to just clean. Yeah. Alrighty. Do you have a fear of, like, contamination? I saw you put on hand sanitizer. Do you... Do you do that yeah, often? Yeah, I like to keep my hands clean because, as you can saw, everything was unorganized, so I had to, yeah. that urge to clean everything. All right, and how, would you say, go ahead, would you say your OCD has gotten any better or worse or, I mean, you're what now? You're 18 years old? 17. 17 years old. So it's been about seven years since you, since you had this. How, how how's it been? Um... I wouldn't say it's gotten worse, but it has broadened, like, as you see here, I came, I did. Is it like that, like, every, like, setting you have to, like, it has to be this way, or? Oh, yeah, it has to be organized. So what happens when you go into a classroom and, the, like, the desk, like, sometimes when there's no one's class, we have to arrange the desk into clumps or something. That's not organized, is it? It isn't. But then, since there's other people, it's hard for me to organize everyone else. So I just try to keep my space organized and just disregard everyone else. But if I can make a change, you're gonna, you're gonna do I'm it. gonna make a change. All right. Have you ever visited a therapist or a psychologist about your disorder? I haven't. I mean, is this your first time talking to someone about it? This is my first time. So you've gone a long, long time without bringing it up. Do you bring it up to other people, or are you, are you just trying to keep it to yourself? I mean, I let them know when I have that urge to clean something. So, like, I'll let them know that, do you think it's fine if I rearrange? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's polite. But I wouldn't say it interferes with my life, but sometimes if it's a huge mess, I have to clean it before I can do anything else. And you said your girlfriend... She suggested you to come onto my show to talk about this. Is that right? Yeah, she did. Her name is Emma. Yes, sir. And have you have you ever taken any antidepressants or any any type of thing to help soothe what you're feeling? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. When we leave here, I'm gonna I'm gonna prescribe you to some antidepressant drugs. See see if that works. Doesn't need magic for you. Is that all right? Thank you. All right, Michael Curry, we'll be right back after this short break. <clears throat> Use for breeze when gauges on the toilet. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Dr. Carp Live with our patient, Michael Curry. As again, putting on hand sanitizer. Uh, Michael suffers from OCD, a chronic uh, disorder where he's constantly cleaning, counting, uh, washing hands, having things spaced a certain way like we saw at the beginning of the show. Everything has to be your way. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. So, Mike, like we said, we're going to uh, uh, prescribe you some antidepressant drugs. And we're going to check back with you in a little bit couple months or so, we're going to try to bring you back on the show and see how everything's going. Does that sound good? Yes, sir. you have any other questions for me? Um, do you think I could uh, straighten out your collar? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that bothering you? Yeah, it was. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, guys, thanks for listening to uh, Michael Curry's story. We'll check back in with him later.
Do you ever suffer from anxiety in public? Do you avoid public confrontation? Does your public discomfort cause you to stray from your normal routine? Or do you constantly avoid social activity because of the fear that you will have an anxiety attack? Well, we here at Need Some Pills have some news for you. We prob you probably suffer from social phobia. Now don't freak out. There are tons of people who suffer from the same disorder, but you wanna know how they deal with it? They came to us. We have a brand of some new astonishing pills. These pills are called SSRIs. Now they lack the, the side effects that their predecessors had. And let me tell you, some of those side effects are pretty bad. But you know wanna know something even better? Is you can get two of these containers for $19.99. Repeat, two of these containers for $19.99. Warning, side effects include reduced sex drive, drowsiness, insomnia, nausea, dry mouth, nervousness, dizziness, and diarrhea. <clears throat> Welcome back to Dr. Cart. As you can see, he's not here right now. So, welcome to Dr. Curry. <laughs> Our next patient is a man with agoraphobia. His name is D. Welcome in, D. How you doing, doctor? I'm good. How are you? Take a seat. Well, we're, we're not alone, are we? No, we're not. I'm right here. As you can see, we have the audience. It's just us out there. Just us. All right. Well, focus on me. All right. Let me continue. For y'all that do not know what agoraphobia is, agoraphobia is an anxiety disorder where one feels terrified for no apparent reason. The person is also scared of having a panic attack in the public space or being in a controlled place with no escape. Symptoms of this disease are fear of being alone in any situation. Do you feel that? I want to ask you if we're alone. Well, I'm here with you, alright? Um, another system is fear of being in a crowded place. Do you feel that too? Mm -hmm. well, Especially in like an elevator. In an elevator? You don't like elevators? Or trains. Or trains, because they're crowded. I hate trains. Because it's right. crowded and it's moving so fast. And there's people all around you. There's just no, you can't go anywhere. I feel you, well, it's just me and you, we're not in a crowded place, and you're not alone. There's exits in here, right? Yes, sir, there's exits to the left and exits to the right. Thank you. Another symptom being fear of being in a place where it may be hard to leave, as you said, such as an elevator or a train. Trains, I hate trains. I hate trains. I can't stand trains. But that's the only way I can get around in New York City, because the subways are like the main transportation. How do you deal with that though? Sometimes if it's nice weather, I'm gonna walk, but I got a 16 mile walk to school every morning and that's too far if it's like snowing or something. But if it's nice, I'm gonna walk cause I don't wanna be on a train. I understand, I understand. So when do you think you uh, developed agoraphobia? I would say when I was about 12 years old. 12 years um, old. I was on an elevator. I wouldn't say it's claustrophobia, cause I'm not. Cause you can put me in a little room, but I'm okay with it. But if you put me with a bunch of people or, or like in a public space, I'm gonna kind of freak out a little bit. So if I do on the show, just, just know that that's why. Please don't freak out. Cause look, I'm here for you. I'm here for you, D. I'm here for you, D. So. How are you feeling being up here? You you good? I think I'm I'm okay right now. Just gotta talk to me. Have you ever talked to a therapist or anyone like that before? I have when I was about 15 years old. My mom and dad referenced me there. They took me there. But I kind of got nervous and didn't really talk at all. So they didn't think anything was wrong. But they brought me back on here. I'm now 19. They brought me back on here. They want me to want me to doc talk to Dr. Curry because they heard good things about him. Dr. Curry, would you say he's better than Dr. Cart? I've talked to Dr. Cart backstage before he left for his business trip. He didn't really seem like he knew what he was talking about. So I think you're doing good right now. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Well, we're gonna we're gonna help you out, D. Do you have anything that can help me out right now? So I'm trying to start to feel something. Um, 
how about we cut to a short break and we'll get you some help. Thank you. <coughs> Do you hear that coughing? Let's go, let's go find it. Trevor, stop coughing. Take these ludens and let's focus on this project, okay? All right. Welcome back to Dr. Curry. You see, D is over here. He's calmed down. He's relaxed. You know, I took him back there, talked to him, let him know that everything will be okay. And so here he is right now sitting in front of you guys. So, D, I'm going to prescribe you to some treatment at Curry Counseling. I heard good things about Curry Counseling. Oh yeah. My buddy goes there. Yeah. Can I can I try a virtual reality? Oh no, that's not for you. That that won't help for you. I'm gonna have you do some acupuncture sessions. You're gonna what? Acupuncture. Actually punch me? Acupuncture. Acu it's a new breakthrough that to help uh agoraphobia. What is acupuncture? Well, I have Dr. Dav who can come out and explain that to you. So everyone welcome Dr. Dab. Hey. Dr. Dab? What's your name again? D? D. All right, D. Well, um, he said you're going to explain acupuncture. Acupuncture. Yeah, so um, acupuncture, we're going to use just, I wouldn't even call them needles. You know what? Needles? No, not needles. That's what I'm not calling them. They're going to be um dry, you know, little pointy tools that we use um, in our office and have you ever gotten a massage yes so you know how they um you know they press uh, pressure points on your body and it just kind of relaxes you and mm -hmm. everything that's all we're doing you'll lay down um in, in a massage chair and we'll just uh, press pressure points on your body and relax you calm you down and a lot of our patients actually just fall asleep take a nice little nap while we're doing it oh, very I'm, painless I'll and try. it's it's been very successful is it gonna help me with my fear yes definitely of having panic attacks and Public spaces? Yes, definitely. Okay. It's been proven very successful. Okay. So I'll have uh, Dr. Uh, Curry give you my number, and you can come on over after you're done with um, his office. Thank you. Thank you. I Thanks, guys. You Everyone give another round of applause for Dr. Dad. Well, thank you for your time. I'll talk to you backstage and give you the context for... Dr. Dab at Curry Counseling. It was Thank nice speaking to you. Thank you, Dr. Curry. Thank you. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Dr. Carp Live. We're going to bring our patients that we interviewed yesterday and see how they're doing. First, let's give it up for Mike. How you doing, Mike? Uh, ah, I was handsome. I was doing good. When I saw this. May I? You may. I thought I fixed that, Mister. I thought I fixed it too. Well, Mike, tell me, tell me how you're feeling when you went home yesterday, and how you're feeling right now. Well, I'm feeling good right now. I'm really grateful for all the information you gave me. And I see a, a bright future between me and my girlfriend. Of course. Do you feel like when you walk into a room that's not the way you want it, do you feel like you can deal with it or do you still? I mean, I, I still get that urge, but I'm working on but it. But you're working on it. I'm working that's all on you can it. ask for. We're going to check back in with you in a couple months and check your progress. Thank you. Thanks for coming on my show. Thank Have you. a good one. We will check back in later with Mike. Now, can we uh, bring back Scott? Scott, how's it going? It's good. I see you got the virtual re reality. How you That's been still on? Oh, how you been liking it? You know, it's good. Well, you know, all those bad emotions aren't gone yet. I mean, you saw me yesterday when I put them on. Yeah, it was rough. It's like... I'm what are you looking at right now? What are you looking at? Right now I'm in the, um, in the living room. Are so you in the room? I haven't made it to the kitchen yet, but 
I mean, progress. Yeah. I've gotten Because yesterday hats. you put it on and they were off in a minute. They it were was, off. It was an emotional experience. What, uh, um, what, what's changed? Have you, you just come to the fact that you got to face your fears or? You know, we had a, um, we had a really good talk, you know, after the show backstage and just you telling me that, you know, I need to really punch through those walls harder and, you know, face my fears head on. It's the only way you're going to, you're going to, you're going to get, get better. Honestly. And I've been, you know, I've been doing my best. And so I'm, I'm making slow them. progress, but I'm making progress. Mike. I appreciate you coming on my show. Thank you. Take it easy and good luck. All right. Take these. Take them with you. Right, thanks. All right. Next, we have Davis. Can we welcome Davis? How you doing today? I'm doing good. Tell me how you're feeling after feeling yesterday. Good. Relaxed. Relaxed. Feeling a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Tell me what you felt when you went home yesterday. Um, I wasn't, I felt the same, basically, to be honest. Did you feel the same? Have you been on an elevator or in any tight situation ever since? Um, Because I know really. to get back up to the parking lot, there, there's an elevator, or there's stairs. Which I, one did you do? I took the stairs. You took the stairs. So you're not over your fears yet? Mm -mm. Are you facing them? Yeah, I faced them. Will you take the elevator for me today? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Alrighty, and, uh, let's see. I gave you some some advice yesterday. Did you did you take it into consideration, like finding exits near you and knowing that you that, that you can get out of small spaces? Yeah. Took all that with you. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, we're gonna check back in with you in a couple months and see how everything's going, Davis. Alright. Thanks for being on my show. Alright, everybody, that concludes our show for today. Uh, we will resume later this week, and we'll check back in with our patients in a little bit.